Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is Eddie Jennings with EJSLLC.com and in this video I'm going to go into um, a little discussion about Microsoft licensing and in particular Windows Server Cows. Now the typical response to any question of Microsoft licensing regardless of how complex it is is licensing is terrible, um, this is too confusing and complex, boo Microsoft. Well, that's not always the case. And in fact, in my experience, more often than not, if you think through things uh, a little bit, you will find that Microsoft licensing can actually be straightforward. And Windows Server CALs are an example of that. So what a CAL is, it stands for Client Access License. And this is the license that allows you to legally access a Windows Server. That's it. Now, I'm not talking about particular products that might be running on top of a Windows Server, such as Exchange Server or SQL Server or RDS services. They have their own licensing model. What I'm talking about is just the Windows Server. And so to, to, to put this into perspective, imagine you're a small business, you're uh, running a couple of Windows servers. One might be a domain controller for Active Directory. You may have a file server and a, a print server. That's, that's, that's those, that's the service that, that we're talking about for, for CALs. We're not talking about Exchange or, or anything like that. They, they have their own licensing model. So the first point with CALs that I think confuses folks is, or can confuse folks rather, is that CALs are not an extra thing. It's not, oh, I bought Windows Server. Oh man, I need to buy these extra CALs as well. No, that's, that's not how it works. The, the CAL is within the, the licensing model for Windows Server. If you were to go to Microsoft site and search around about licensing and maybe look up like Server 2019 licensing, it is clearly stated, you know, Server plus CAL licensing or Cores plus CAL licensing. Um, now, as far as the real detailed definition of a cow, you can dig into product use rights and 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 get a lot of detail for it. But for for the most part, your cows are going to come in in two um, versions. You have user cow and device cow. And between those those two types of cows, I would say nine times out of ten, you're going to be using user cows versus device cows. Now, I'm going to explain them in reverse order and you, you'll see why user CALs are probably going to be the better choice for you. Um, re recall that CAL is Client Access License and the way a device CAL works is for any device on your um, network that is going to be talking to a Windows Server, you need a CAL. So this could be useful if you have um, a workforce that works in shifts and you have uh, just a couple of terminals in the office and let's say you have 15 people and those 15 people are using only those three terminals, well it might make sense to buy three device cows for those terminals to be able to legally talk to your Windows server that's running AD and your file server and, and that kind of thing. However, um, Sometimes that can be a bit confusing to, to, to manage, especially if you start getting into a situation where you have some um, employees that are using these terminals, others might have their, their own um, device, others might have several devices that, 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 that they use in addition to the terminals. This is where the, your user cows come in. And a user cow is one cow per user. That's it. You, you get a user cow for Employee A, employee A can use 50 different devices to talk to your Windows file server. They have their, their, their user cal. User cows, in my experience, are much easier to track. Again, how many cows do you have in your business or how many cows do, 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 you, do you need to, to have to be compliant with your Windows server licensing? Number of users equals number of cows. 50 person business, 50 cows. 100 person business, 100 cows. Um, single person business, single cow. That's it. So um, even though that, that'll, if, if I was a single person business, I might not be running Windows, but that's, that's uh, outside the, the scope of discussion. So um, for cows, user cows, in my opinion, are going to be the way to go, even though you might see a little bit of, um, of price advantage with, with the, the device cows. I've, in my experience, that's going to become more cumbersome to, to manage over time than the user cows. And so whatever price advantage you might have with device cows might be lost in just time spent managing the number of cows that, 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 that you need for your business. So 
and the the way that you keep this from from being a shock when you're um, deciding whether or not you need to use Windows Server in in your business and you're determining the cost and such of it is to go ahead and and determine the cost of CALS at the same time. Look at what your workforce is. Um, make some projections of where you might see your workforce in um, a couple of years or so and buy CALS accordingly. The beauty of cows, I would not buy cows ahead of time. I wouldn't say, hey, I have 10 people working in my business and I think I'm going to have 50 employees by the end of the year. Let me go and buy 50 cows now. No, buy, buy the cows at, at, as you need. But when you're trying to think through kind of the cost over time for Windows, think through, oh, if, if I were to expand to 50 employees, then this would be the likely cost of Windows Server plus Cal. Now, one other thing to, to, to consider with CALS is they are specific to server version asterisk. And I, I, I say asterisk because there's an exception to this. If when you talk to your reseller, you are not buying, you wouldn't buy um, like server 2012 CALS right now. Let's say that you're in, in your business, you have a couple of Windows servers, you have, you've just deployed a brand new one, it's current server 2019, and your domain controller that you have in your file server uh, might be server 2016. Well, when you buy a CAL, it is server CAL that is for the current version of Windows Server. You would be buying server 2019 CAL. However, a server 2019 CAL is valid for previous versions of Windows Server. Now, let's say that you have your license agreement, you have your CAL, and that license agreement has come to an end. You're not maintaining software assurance or anything like that with it, and um, server 2022 is out now. Well, for that server 2022, you will need to have CALs for server 2022. That server 2019 CAL is not going to be valid for server 2022. So I, I like to think of CALs as kind of backwards compatible, like the, the current version of CAL will cover you for that version of Windows Server and previous versions, but will not cover you for future versions that, that come out after you, you, you uh, buy that CAL. So that 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 in itself gets into I think the second point of confusion for cows and why people sometimes think think they're an extra thing with you do not need to buy Windows Server cows more than once for your users and what I mean by this is let's say that you have those three Windows servers deployed the domain controller the um, the uh, file server and the print server you do not need to buy three cows per user one for each of those Windows servers Rather, that one CAL purchase for the user grants them the access or grants them the rights to access all three of those Windows servers. And that, so I think the fact that it's not a one to one purchase of servers of CALs to servers, but rather one to one purchase of CALs to users can, can be a, a bit confusing. But again, if you kind of sit and think about it, it makes sense. Hey, this, what this CAL represents, client access license, represents my right to access Windows servers. Not a Windows server, but Windows servers. So therefore, that would apply to all of my Windows servers. And again, um, for particular products that would be installed on top of Windows Server, like Exchange or RDS and such, that this, what well, well, I'm talking about in this video does not apply. They have their, their own models and such. This is just for Windows Server. So as you can see, it, it can sound confusing, but when you think it through, CALs really aren't, aren't that difficult, especially if, if you choose to use user CALs where it's quite simple. Number of users equals number of CALs. That's it. Well, what does it cost to have Windows Server? Well, you determine um, the number of core licenses that, that have to be bought, and you can look on Microsoft's site. There's minimum required licenses and all that kind of stuff, so that number plus the cost of your user CALs for your workforce equals number. That's how much it costs to, to license, to properly license Windows Server and your users to be able to use Windows Server. So I hope you found this in, in, informative and hopefully has, has dispelled some of the um, perceived confusion about uh, Windows Server CALs. Feel free to comment below if you have a, a better way of explaining CALs or, uh, or, or have thought of something that I've, I've left out. I've kind of scratched the surface of it, but it's really what's applicable to, to most cases for user CALs. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you click like and subscribe to the channel so you can be aware of when new content comes available. Thank you for your time and I'll see you the next time.